Lisa. Oh my goodness. Good morning, my loves. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Good morning, good morning. This week is all about flowers and gardening week. And I know all of you <clears throat> have such amazing flowers and fruits and vegetables in your garden. I know you all do. We love it as well, and we do. So my loves, <clears throat> I hope you all enjoyed yesterday. The first in our series, Eugenie Clark, female shark scientist. I'm, oh, oh. <laughs> it looks like a shark fin. What? Christine is so ingenious. I love her so much. <laughs> so yesterday we started our first in the series of the awesome Once Upon a True Story series with Eugenia Clark, the first female shark scientist. I hope you all enjoyed it. It was awesome. And I hope you enjoy our next pick, not next Monday, but the following Monday. We have Miss Mel has so many awesome ones lined up for us. So they're going to be really cool. <clears throat> now today, my loves, like I said, we're talking about flowers in the garden. Oh my goodness. Now, how many of you, raise your hands up high, how many of you help your parents or your grown-ups in the garden? Mm-hmm. Let me see. Do I see your hands? Okay. Oh, I know you do. Do you help dig the holes? Do you help water? Do you help give them lots of extra love? I know you all do because you've got lots of love in you. I know that for a fact. So today, my loves, Miss Mel has a book, which was one of my favorite picks. <clears throat> we do the Longwood Garden Community Read series every year. And this is one of Miss Mel's favorite picks, The Reason for Flower, written and illustrated by Ruth Heller. And it was one of my favorite picks from the Longwood Gardens Community Read series that we do programs for every year. And they provide us with wonderful books and materials. They're fantastic. And this, I found, is a great way and an easy, simple way to explain flowers and the reason for a seed and a flower and how important our pollinators are. So let's dive into our book today, The Reason for a Flower. Yes, I said it. Let's dive. <laughs> into our book today, The Reason for a Flower. Let's give a shout out to flowers. Ooh, ooh. Shout out for flowers and fruits and vegetables. Do our happy dance. They're amazing. The Reason for a Flower, written and illustrated by Ruth Heller. Birds and bees. Do you see all those birds and bees? Birds and bees are very important because there are pollinators. Do you see them? Hummingbirds help sip the nectar out of flowers and they help put that in a little bit of everything. And bees help pollinate and pollen, what's pollen? Pollen helps flowers flower. So it's like a fertilizer, it helps flowers flower. And these, oh my goodness, let us not forget our beautiful butterflies. Oh my goodness, <clears throat> so we have butterflies, birds, and bumblebees. Oh my goodness, and moss, our pollinators from the evening. Let's not forget the nighttime pollinators, our moss, who do a beautiful, wonderful job in spreading that pollen from flower to flower and fruit and vegetable to help them grow. And bats, bats are another type of breed of animal that help the pollinators. They are evening pollinators. Oh, now, and as they search for more and more pollen, these wonderful birds, bees, bats, moths, and, and butterflies and pollinators, they spread that pollen from flower to flower, and as soon as you know it, they begin to explore. So they suck one pollen out of one flower, and they go from flower to flower to flower to flower to flower. And yes, I said it, from flower to flower to flower to flower, and it ended Christina's carrots, and they help them grow, 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 big, big, big. <clears throat> now some pollen, travels in the breeze in the wind so sometimes you could be outside and some pollen goes <sighs> travels on the wind so the wind helps carry the pollen from flower to flower and without the help of birds or bees and butterflies and very often <clears throat> this pollen makes you sneeze oh, oh, oh. Shee! <clears throat> shake it off now from an anther now anther we're going to learn different parts of a flower these are the anthers, and an anther is a part of a plant that contains a pollen. And then you have something called a stamen. Now, 
the part of the stamen is the part of the flower that holds the pollen, holds the anthers that holds the pollen. Now you also have a stigma, and a stigma is a part where pollen helps germinate and develop. So you have that right there, and pollen grains must travel and stay a little while, and then when the pollen starts to germinate, which means when it starts to help fertilize that flower, you're gonna see it turn into a beautiful flower. All of a sudden the flower starts as a seed, and then that pollen catches it, and then it blooms, and we get all these beautiful colors. And then you start to see from all this pollen in our pollinators, flowers. Look at those flowers. Are they beautiful? They're amazing. And sometimes you'll see weeds as well. And weeds, we, the weeds have a purpose as well. And the reason for a flower is to help produce seeds. Look at all these amazing seeds. Can you tell me what some of the fruits and vegetables are in here? There's a tomato and an avocado and looks like a pepper and looks like a snap pea and looks like a pomegranate and what's our favorite during the summer miss mel loves it ice cold watermelon oh my goodness and our seeds are very important we find seeds in everything and miss mel has a special treat for you all today after story time and i'm going to tell you what that is after a story but seeds help us help those flowers and fruits and vegetables grow <clears throat> And we find seeds in everything. Find them in coconuts, and we find them in maple leaf and oak tree seeds. And you know what? We find them in oranges. We find them in all our fruits and vegetables and wonderful seeds from our trees and flowers. And you know what? Seeds travel far and wide. And you know who helps travel these seeds far and wide? Sometimes squirrels. Yes, I said it, squirrels. And sometimes bunnies. Woo! Shout out to our bunny people. The hares have it. What? Uh, uh, bunnies. <laughs> squirrels hide them and forget they do. Sometimes squirrels hide their nuts and forget where they hide their nuts. They dig real deep and they burrow them. And sometimes you'll see a tree pop up. <clears throat> and sometimes they have them and, and it sticks to the bunny's fur. Oh, yeah. That's what Christine is doing. She's brushing her fur. Because sometimes when they travel through burrows or they travel through bushes or flowers, they stick to their fur. And then the seeds drop off somewhere. And then all of a sudden you find something really cool. Miss Mel had a pumpkin grow in her garden last year. A little baby pumpkin. We named him Little Punk. And he grew in my garden last year. And he must have been a carrier from a bird a squirrel or a wonderful buddy. <clears throat> seeds can settle anywhere they find water, sun, and air. So you know what? They grow roots once they're seeded. And you see all these fruits and vegetables, they grow roots once the seeds. And what do we see on our page that Christina absolutely loves? Oh my goodness, she loves carrots. <laughs> and she sees her carrot. <laughs> she just faded. <laughs> she loves her carrots. And we see when we plant a seed with enough, what do we do in our class? With enough sun, water, and lots of love, my loves. We need to care for our wonderful seeds and plants so they grow. And Miss Mel's gonna tell you, just like what we always say, just like us, just like people, when people get enough care and love and support, they grow and grow to be gorgeous, beautiful from the inside out. And then they grow into roots and leaves and they grow into fruits and vegetables. And then some seeds grow up and they grow up to be huge trees where there are houses for dragonflies and frogs and bunnies. They provide shade and shelter and a great place to read a book. These grow where it's very dry. So a lot of plants grow in different places depending upon the climate. So if they have a dry climate, a warm, really hot climate, there are some cacti which have little prickers on them, but they can also flower as well. And they're beautiful. So you have some flowers that grow in dry climates. <clears throat> and these grow, these flowers grow where it's very wet, like lotus flowers, lilies on a lily pond. These grow where it's very wet and they stay in the water. 
and they're very gorgeous. And you know, lotus flowers are one of Miss Mel's absolute favorite flowers that grows in dark, damp, muddy places. From the darkest, deepest, muddy places come these most gorgeous flowers that bloom. And that, that's really uh, something, a lesson of life for us to learn. <clears throat> and then, oh, they're most important. They're not like flowers, but they are seeds, and they do carry seeds. We have barley and corn, which is a summer favorite. We love our corn and bamboo and millet and wheat, so a lot of these grow. And animals who don't like meat, they are called herbivores. They eat a lot of plants. Isn't that cool? So you see a lot of little animals here. Can you pick one of the animals out you see today? Why, Christina, she eats lots of plants. They don't eat any meat, but she eats lots of plants. They're called herbivores. Now, would you believe <clears throat> that some plants in the plant kingdom eat meat? Some plants eat meat. Yes, I said it, you have carnivorous plants. So you have carnivorous plants which eat meat, like the Venus flytrap. Some of them do in that, and the plant can eat meat. Then you have this flower, which finds it grows in the jungle. It's what parasite, wonderful flower that feeds on other plants. And it's called a rafflesia. And that's huge. It's one of the biggest flowers in the flower kingdom in the world. Is that not cool or what? It's beautiful. Now, some flowers <clears throat> were around when dinosaurs were on the earth. Were on the earth. And these are prehistoric flowers. And one of the prehistoric flowers in our book today is a magnolia. Huge, beautiful blooms that give a gorgeous scent. Oh, and some flowers, some flowers and plants don't flower at all. Like a mushroom. <clears throat> and some flowers have blossoms like fruit flowers. All of a sudden they have a flower like this. And they go, long, 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 long. and all of a sudden from that flower comes a wonderful fruit, like a plum. Now, Miss Nell has a special treat for you all today. <clears throat> but first, I'm going to mention the cool science experiment that's going to teach you more about how water reaches a flower and how important that sunshine and water are. So you're going to have in our Facebook Live feed today, you have a link for a cool science experiment that's called color changing flowers now this is extra cool because you get to use what different white flowers like you could use a daisy a white daisy you could use a white carnation you could use a white rose and you put them in different cups with different dye <clears throat> and the instructions are going to show you how to cut them so that you're going to see how water just like when you sip water from a straw how water reaches through the stem and gets to the flower and that dye is going to turn your flowers a cool color. Is that super cool or what? So this gives you really cool instructions. And you're going to be able to change the colors of your flowers. So between six to eight hours, usually, Miss Mel's done this experiment before too, it's super fun. You, again, in our Facebook Live feed, you have the link to show you how to do it. And it's really super easy and it's so much fun. And you get to change the color of your flowers. It's awesome. So I suggest you try it today or uh, at time this week. It's super cool. Again, it's a great way to show you how the water goes through <clears throat> the stem of a flower and changes and how it, it nourishes your flower. Now today, I have an extra, Christina and I have an extra special treat for you after story time, after we finish this story time, we're going to post a video. Yes, a video. You're going to get to explore with me and Miss Christina Bunny, although Christina Bunny wasn't in our video, but she was there in spirit. She was tending to her carrots, Miss Mel grows for her, and she was making sure that she, oh, they're getting so big and she loves them so much. And you know what, Miss Mel said, you go tend your carrots. <clears throat> And I'm, we'll make this video. So it is a fun time. It's a video that gets you to come to my house. And we get to explore the garden together. You're going to explore Miss Mel's fruits and vegetables and flowers. We're going to see some pollinators. It's going to be super cool. So stay tuned. Right after we finish our wonderful story time here. Right after we end our story time here. 
we want you to watch out for this video. We're going to post it right here on Facebook. And you're going to be able to go on an exploration tour of Miss Mel's garden. And you're going to come to my house. How cool is that? I get to, to invite you to my house. And I love that, my loves. So, Christina, high five, high paw. We are so excited to see you. Check out this video, my loves. And thank you for joining us for story time today. Love you, my loves. See you tomorrow for another most awesome flower book. And check out our video that's coming right after we end our story time today. Love you all. Mwah.